global warming, rising water levels, increasing fire storms and droughts, and devastating weather events. I'm of course talking about climate change, one of the most critical issues of our time. While there are some who are still in unconvinced, I'm not here to debate the reality of global warming, but instead to offer an immediate uh, way to deal with the problem that few people have heard about and even fewer are talking about. Most of the attention given to climate change focuses on fossil fuel overuse. And while our addiction to fossil fuels is the primary cause of uh, greenhouse gas buildup, uh, and solving that addiction is the only long-term solution, there are other major sources of carbon. Chief among them is the soil. That's right, the ground under our feet and in our farms uh, it stores huge amounts of carbon. By changing our land use policies and converting to sustainable farming practices, we can begin to slow and even reverse uh, greenhouse gas growth. Research shows that the use of sustainable farming techniques, known collectively as, car uh, as conservation agriculture, is our best hope to effectively reduce global warming in the short term because use of these techniques can simultaneously reduce carbon emissions from the soil and sequester carbon from the air back into the soil. In this presentation, I'll explain the soil carbon cycle. I'll show how carbon emitted from the soil can be reduced to the levels that existed before human activity. And I'll describe how soil and plants can be used to harn and can be harnessed rather to remove greenhouse gases from the soil. A carbon flows naturally between the soil and the atmosphere. Christopher Jansen, senior staff scientist at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, provides a clear description of the process which I've represented in this diagram. My visual aid shows the emission of carbon from the soil through natural plant respiration as it's converted into carbon dioxide and it goes into the atmosphere. Simultaneously, carbon dioxide is used by plants during photosynthesis. The carbon that they take in is stored in their tissues and eventually returns to the soil. As you can see from um, Professor Jansen's um, numbers here, there's an equilibrium between the amount that's uh, expired and the amount that's brought back into the soil. Um, after the advent of modern agriculture, however, this balance has been unbalanced. Uh, the amount of carbon uh, expired from the soil has increased, while the amount that's taken up by plants has decreased. And this has led to a buildup in the atmosphere over the last 10,000 years, leading to the record levels that we have today. Uh, while carbon uh, escapes naturally from the soil in small amounts, when disturbed, much more is lost. Tillage, commonly known as plowing, breaks up the soil, um, and it's normally used for planting and seeds and for uh, weed and crop residue removal. However, as described by UN Climate Talks representative Albert Bates, tillage exposes carbon-rich soil matter under the surface, allowing it to mix with oxygen and be converted into carbon dioxide. Once released, that carbon takes much longer to coax back into the soil. The carbon agriculture technique of no-till minimizes soil disturbance to reduce carbon oxidation and topsoil erosion. And it also improves the overall health of the soil. Tillage leaves soil vulnerable to erosion through wind and rainwater runoff, and it's slow to heal reducing the carbon sequestration capacity of the soil. But leaving the soil undisturbed allows those soil structures to develop um, strong and healthy uh, structures and it can even uh, heal previously damaged soils. Not only can we prevent soil carbon loss, but we can even enlist the soil and the plants to help recapture carbon and store it away. Crop residue is the unused leftovers of the plant which are traditionally plowed under, hauled away, or even burned. As Dr. Rattan Lal in Carbon Management in Agricultural Soils explains, crop residue left in the fields breaks down through biological and chemical processes and actually returns carbon to the soil. Fields are left fallow or empty after harvesting. Planting cover crops instead draws carbon through, uh, into the soil rather through photosynthesis throughout the entire off-season. According to Dr. Peter Hobbs and Dr. Bram Gilberts, crop residue and cover crops discourage weeds from germinating while simultaneously supplying other nutrients to the soil. 
We have the opportunity right now to help our planet begin to heal instead of continuing to contribute to its early demise as well as our own. Beginning these changes now will buy us time to come up with sustainable alternatives to fossil fuels to meet our energy needs in the future. Research shows that the use of sustainable farming techniques known collectively as conservation agriculture is our best hope to effectively reduce global warming in the short term because use of these techniques can simultaneously reduce carbon emissions and sequester carbon from the air back into the soil. Changing to no-till farming will prevent huge amounts of carbon from being unnecessarily lost while retaining crop residue and planting cover crops will improve soil health and support sequestering more carbon into the soil from the air. Are there any questions? Isn't some of that carbon absorbed by the oceans? That's a great question. It is true that our oceans can absorb huge amounts of carbon. However, according to Christopher Jansen, they can only absorb so much over a given period, and much of it is sort of under ice, which is melting uh, at an increasing rate. Any other questions? Isn't the real solution reduction of fossil fuel use? And that is absolutely right. Drastically reducing the use of fossil fuels is the only long-term solution. Unfortunately, it's also very politically charged and highly profitable. The steps I've outlined here are only the first for mitigating the problem. According to Dr. Hobbs and Govertz, this will buy us time for the next 50 to 100 years while we hopefully come to our senses about fossil fuel use. Thank you.